flight was delayed to the gave us this box and receiving a box around this time made me think of matzah, shmura matzah. So refuel your jets of faith and eat shmura matzah. Get your shmura matzah today. Shmura handmade matzah. You can't ever compare the quality of handmade to mass machine made matzahs. If you're going to do it, do it right. Hi, my name is Fitzer Benjamin. Welcome to the Late Pasha Show. This week's portion is Pasha's Tzav. Let's figure this out. This week's Torah portion, we learn about sacrifices. Killing animals. Killing animals. Alright, so let me just warn that this video is not for the faint-hearted. This video is not for the faint-hearted. If for whatever reason you have a pet cow or sheep or goat that you are very fond of and feel very attached to, you might just want to stop watching the video. Actually don't, because Torah is the Torah of truth. And if sacrificing animals is one of the things that God requested we do for him, that is because it is right and is moral. Us as human beings feel that we decide what's moral and we decide what's right and wrong, when really it's God who does so. But don't kill your pet cow. That's not at all what... no. The truth is though, killing animals and bringing them as sacrifices to God actually seems to counter so many of the Torah values. Not the least of which is that it involves taking a life away from a living being. And from a cold and technical point of view, why would God require us to get rid of good and valuable property that we own? Burn it up for no apparent benefit. God obviously values life, and he obviously values property, as there's actually a mitzvah to not waste anything. So how does this mitzvah of sacrificing animals fall in place? The answer lies in the fact that only the sacrifices from all other mitzvahs in the Torah are called pleasing to God. What's up with that? Why are the sacrifices from all mitzvahs in the Torah the only mitzvah which is called pleasing to God? Aren't all the mitzvahs pleasing? 11th century commentator known as Rashi, who's already a regular on the late Parsha show, explains that what's so pleasing to God is the fact that he commanded this and we do it, the fact that his will is being implemented. There are a lot of mystical and allegorical explanations and reasons given for the sacrifices, but Rashi is giving us the most basic reason why it's so pleasing to Hashem, to God. Because what he wants done is getting done. Because he said something and his will is being implemented. Falitokom. Molen. There are plenty of mitzvahs that we don't understand and we do them anyway. But the sacrifices are something special. A mitzvah like keeping kosher doesn't make sense to us, but there's no reason why it shouldn't make sense. It makes sense to us that there's a reason we just don't know. We can even sort of have this ulterior motive that it's self-discipline. This is what I believe God wants me to do and this is what I'm going to do regardless of whether or not I understand. By the sacrifices, there's no such thing. Not only we don't understand it, it totally doesn't make sense to us because it seems immoral. It counters what we know to be right and good. It contravenes logic. And nevertheless, it's through us lucky Jews that God's will gets implemented in the world. And may it be God's will that Mashiach, his ultimate will, come now. Listen,